welcome to Kumba. In the background is the amusement park. As you can see, our modest city is not yet like barely no room. However, be rest assured that Kumba you are watching right now shall become one of the most outstanding cities in the possible nearest future. First of all, you shall get a general background knowledge of Kumba, the place that attracted four professors from the University of Dayton for a very important visit on Wednesday, 24 February 2016. Right here, we are standing at Hilltop with the Kumba 2 Business Center just nearby. In the background is the Baptist Church. In the Kumba 2 Administrative Unit, there are famous neighborhoods like Fiango Haza Quarters. Politin and Kusala. Right at the other extreme of the town, towards Manfe and Lum, is the Kumba 3 administrative unit. It is expected to be the seat of our young university, the HTTTC, or Higher Technical Teachers Training College. Kumba 3 covers Mambanda, Ntam, the train station, and crosses over to parts of Boya Road. The mascot or symbol of Kumba is the umbrella tree or a Kumba, as it is called in the Bafo dialect. Apart from providing a very peculiar forest canopy, it is believed that the presence of this tree anywhere is a strong indicator of fertility. The abundance of this tree, it is said, attracted the attention of the earliest founders of Kumba who settled at the present site. The green image at the heart of the logo of the Kumba City Council represents the typical canopy-shaped leaf of the umbrella tree. So, what keeps on attracting people from far and near into Kumba? Kumba is a real cultural melting pot. The four stars of the logo of the Kumba City Council represent the ethnic communities who from time immemorial have lived in peaceful coexistence in Kumba. They are the Bafors, the Bakundus, the Balongs, and the Barombis. In addition, other tribes have migrated massively to settle in the rich agricultural lands in Kumba. People from all the regions of Cameroon and neighboring Nigeria have come to Kumba and transformed it into a truly cosmopolitan place. All types of cultural singing, dancing, dressing, and foods reflect the wonderful cultural diversity of Kumba. Kumba is very famous for its cocoa production. More than 50% of Cameroonian cocoa is transported out of Kumba. Kumba is also well known for abundant foodstuff, plantains, yams, forest spices, fruits, and vegetables. Small and medium scale livestock farming is very widely practiced, especially pigry and poultry. Kumba is also the center for modern fishery activities. Since the days of PW Kumba, which was a first division football club that captured the hearts and minds of all the fans, football still has a very important place to play in the life of the people of Kumba. Every year, the Kumba City Council Interquarters football competition remains amongst the most exciting events of the year. The Cameroon Football Development Program it's a wonderful initiative by Justine Fozano, a former student of Dayton University who came to Ukumba for the immersion program. It comes to satisfy the desire of the people of Kumba for good football games. It is also a means of uniting the youth of Kumba with their friends all over the world through the love of the game. The Kumba market is one of the most famous markets of our nation. It is often said that the former first lady Jemen Aijo used to do shopping in the Kumba market. People still come from Yaoundé, Douala and Bafusang to buy and sell in the Kumba market. Located at the crossroads of Mundemba, Douala, Lum and Manfe, the hustle and bustle in Kumba speaks of a place that is heading for a bright future of peace and prosperity. This is the building of the Senior Divisional Office, Meme. The senior divisional officer, Kurubu Damandavid, directly represents the central government and oversees the activities of all government services in Meme Division. This includes the Kumba City Council, for which he is the supervisory authority. In order to pay due homage, the starting point on the agenda of the visit of the University of Dayton was 
the senior divisional officer's office. Due to reasons beyond his control, the SDO for Meme, Kubut Aman David, could not be present at the arrival of the delegation from the University of Dayton, who were accompanied by the government delegate to the Kumba City Council, Gong Kele Victor. Nevertheless, the first deputy, Madame Veklin Epule Wanembua, was available to chat with the four professors from Dayton. She had a brief talk with the Dayton delegation and the government delegate to the Kumba City Council, Victor Gong Kele. Afterward, the delegation left straight for the hall of the city council, where everything was set for the official start of the visit. This building is the official seat of the Kumba City Council. It contains the office of the government delegate, who is the chief executive of the city council. The heart of Kumba beats from this building, and it was the focal point of the University of Dayton visit. First of all, let us have a brief look at the functioning of the local government at the Kumba City Council. With the assistance of the Secretary General, Shea Henry, and a very strong administrative and technical staff, the government delegate manages the day-to-day -day activities of the Kumba City Council, as stipulated by the 2004 laws on decentralization. Part 5, governing councils in urban areas like Kumba. The duties of the government delegate are mostly in areas of waste management, road maintenance, street lighting, urban and interurban transportation and urban planning. Kumba has a master plan and a land use plan. The government delegate spearheads the implementation of these plans with the assistance of a monitoring committee. This is also the building where the city council or the deliberative arm of the local government meets at least three times a year to steer the course of life in the local community. The city council is composed of 18 grand councillors including subdivisional mayors of Kumba 1, 2 and 3. The city council is convened by the government delegate who presides over its meetings. The staff of the Kumba City Council had put everything in the right place to ensure that there was joy and satisfaction for their special guests. The visit started officially when the government delegate to the Kumba City Council, Victor Nkelego, had to present a very powerful speech. He carefully and exhaustively elaborated on the fruitfulness of the ties between Kumba and the University of Dayton. The people of Kumba are very happy to hereby express the warmest greetings of welcome to a very imminent quartet of professors from the University of Dayton. We wish professors Malcolm Daniels, John Hess, Amy Anderson, and Julius Amy to really feel very comfortable and fully satisfied in Kumba. The relationship between the University of Dayton and Kumba is a sweet romance story that has been building up for about two decades with no blemish. Of no less significance is the water project that was initiated in the Barombebo village as a result of the Cameroon immersion program. It was a pathetic story of a village whose lake supplied drinking water to the whole municipality, yet had no portable water to drink. In an ingenious program, engineering students from the University of Dayton executed the vital water supply project that brought joy and better life to the entire village of Barombimbo. Now that we have a spew, but there is no movement that a bite can even reach that village. The Cameroon Immersion Program has proven to be the proverbial chicken that lay golden eggs for the people of Kumba. The Anne Gabonet Library is probably the most concrete result that has emerged out of the Immersion Program, which the University of Dayton has carried out in Kumba over the past 20 years. The library is made of the following sections a beautiful and well-equipped children's corner, a vast and quiet reading room, the Chantal Bia video conferencing center to fight HIV AIDS and a cultural section. The library also has a collection of more than 20,000 books and periodicals on a very wide range of subjects. Madame Boy Neraldin, Chief of Service for Social and Cultural Affairs at the Kumba City Council explains how the community is encouraged to derive maximum benefits through the use of the library. Uh, what 
we do is we have a radio program that we usually go on air uh, to sensitize the population, make them know that the library is there existing. And then we, we, we usually visit schools. We have a yearly program that we go to schools, we visit schools and we give them the information to make them know that the library exists and it is there for everybody to use. The emotional high point of the visit was when the Dayton professors were surprisingly dressed up in Bafo traditional attire. When the entire high table suddenly left the hall, few people could guess on what would happen next. Then, wow! They appeared a few minutes later looking absolutely gorgeous. This is a gesture of love and friendship which is reserved for very special guests. <laughs> Cameroonese football, the CFDP football project, an offshoot of the Cameroon Immersion Program, provides healthy entertainment for the youths of Kumba. It even offers a better perspective for children who may eventually pick up a lucrative career in professional football. Of course, there is no way you can write the history of Cameroon Football Development Program without a mention of the Immersion Program of Dayton University. For it was through that program that Justin Fozano, the founder of the organization, first visited Cameroon, Kumba, in 2006 when they started working at uh, the Baron Bimbo village across the lake for their water project. Our visitors from Dayton University made it a point of honor to stop at this house. What could explain such great interest for this place? This is the home of a host family in Kumba. Students from the University of Dayton lived, walked, played and slept in this house for one month. They were literally baptized by immersion into a unique experience of African life. As the name of the program puts it, Cameroon Immersion Program. Today, Kuo Sona Elonge, the father of this home, is no more. May the soul of the faithful departed rest in peace. This is the Women Empowerment Center in Kumba. It is a service of the Ministry of Women Empowerment and the Family placed under the authority of the Kumba City Council. Our visitors from Dayton were absolutely amazed at what the Kumba City Council is achieving for the success of women and the girl child. Madam Diaga, you are the director of the Women Empowerment Center in Kumba. The professors from Dayton were on visit at your center today. What did you have to show them which was so special? First of all, I took them around the center showed them all the departments of the center and then gave them an expose of what the center is all about. Above all, I told them some of the things that when their students are here, we used to carry out, like training on care tree, hotel management, like dressmaking. But what was so special was the digital unit that has been installed by the Orange Company. So I talked to them about it, that we want to train women how they can transfer data to information inside the computer so they can be able to use it to come up with their businesses like uh, female entrepreneurs. So that was the latest uh, uh, aspect that we had in the center. We have training here, like just if you find out there now, we have over 50 women inside there who are carrying out training in the evening, the ICT training and training on entrepreneurship and adult literacy. And then we have permanent training which women, uh, young girls and married women come for the center. That is, they train for about one year, two years to perfect themselves and empower themselves economically on any activity that can help them generate income and help their families. And then after this training, the center has a revolving loan scheme that we give to women as a soft loan that helps them to start up something that at least can help support their families. Well, thank you so much. We are just uh, very honored to be here. It has been an amazing experience. Our students have been coming here for many years, and this is the first time that we've been able to visit. And it's really uh, made a very important impression on us. We're very impressed by all of the things that we've seen, 
the good work that's been happening and the opportunity that the community has given to our students. And we hope that our students have also given something back to the community and that we have a really mutually beneficial relationship and that it continues for many more years. It's really been a very, very special experience for us. It's, it's always a wonderful thing to be back in Kumba. Kumba for me is home. I know the Kumba people in terms of the Kumba people um, are kind. It's a community. And uh, if you, as you drive into Kumba, it looks as if it's uh, a city just by the wayside. But as you unpack and begin to interact with the people, you begin to see a sense of resilience. Uh, you begin to send, see a sense of courage, determination, and a sense of pride. Every good thing has a beginning and an end. To close up this memorable day was a presentation of gifts and farewell to our guests from the Dayton University as they continued on their tour, which covered several African countries. We hope that this program has enabled you to discover Kumba as you've never done before on the occasion of the visit of the Dayton University. Kumba is a land of endless opportunities and we hope to receive more visitors from other parts of the world. Goodbye.